Here are five things you can do with Mac Pages that you probably had no idea about. Welcome back to my channel. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and I'm gonna show you five different cool things you can do with Mac Pages that you probably didn't know about. So if you are one of those people that like to know kind of the secret little things you can do with different programs on your Mac, this is what this is gonna be about. A lot of people use Mac Pages. It's obviously a replacement for something like Microsoft Word, but there's a lot of things you can do in there that a lot of people just don't know about or they don't use that often. So I might do another video later of five more, but I'm gonna start off the video by showing you five things that you probably didn't know and they're probably gonna be kind of cool or useful at least if you design different documents and things like that. So let's get into the video. I'll show you how to do it. And then at the end of the video, let me know, did you know about these or did you not? All right, so the first tip is gonna be something a lot of people don't know you can do, but watch this. So if you go up to, click on your document, let's just go ahead and click, this is just a sample document, but I'm just gonna click somewhere in the document right there. Go up to insert up here, and then you wanna go down all the way down to web video, you can see it right there, so click on it. It's gonna bring up a window just like this, see it here? It's gonna say add videos from YouTube and you know Vimeo. So you can basically, I actually selected one of my videos, I just went to YouTube, selected the link, I'm gonna go ahead and just paste it right in there like that. You can see that's my newest video for tech news. I'm gonna go ahead and click insert next. And there it is. So basically you can see it here, you can go ahead and resize it and it's gonna resize the text around it. So once you go ahead and you, you, you know, obviously send this to somebody, you can go ahead and click on this and they'll be able to watch the videos you can see here. See that? Looking for some Apple news? Let's get into it. Pretty cool, huh? So if you want to send this to friends and family that have pages, you can go ahead and embed this into there. Now, it may not work. I haven't tested it fully in Word and stuff, but if people are on pages, this will work just fine. And if you want to go ahead and just document certain videos. So it's a thing that's built into pages and go ahead and use it. It's, it's there right now and very easy to use. All right, so tip number two is very similar and a lot of people still don't know this is available either. So what you want to do is here's my sample document. You want to go ahead and just click somewhere in the document. Then when you want to go up to insert up here. And uh, what we wanna do is this time it's an image gallery. Now watch this, you click image gallery and a lot of people do this and they don't understand obviously what to do next, but you can resize this and put this anywhere you want in your document. You can see how everything kind of wraps around it. Uh, and then let's actually make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Now all you have to do is just, here's a folder over here. I have some images in here. Uh, let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. So I just have some basic images in here, but you can select, let's say one, I'm just gonna select four different images here and just grab them and drop them right into this square. And watch what happens here. They're gonna load in and you can see that it puts all these images in here. So now if a person's reading this, you can actually update the caption here very easily. But if the person clicks on these little dots here, um, it'll show, or, or the arrows up here, either way, you can see that it's gonna show different images in this caption. So if you're telling a story about maybe a different country or something and you wanna show pictures of the landscapes, it's a really kind of interactive way to do it. So that's just another tip. A lot of people just don't know that exists. So this next one is for people that might want to create like a flyer or something with really attractive text, maybe like a textured text. So I'm going to go to a second page here. I'm going to make a new title here, but let's just go ahead and just show you. First of all, this is just text. Obviously, it's the same as here. And you can go ahead and I'm going to make a bold and I'm going to go ahead and make it really, really big so we can see the effect. So you want to make this pretty big so you can actually see this kind of texturing taking place. So I'm gonna make it across the whole page. But again, you can do whatever you want with this, make it any size, it's gonna work the same. So what you start off by doing is you select all the text, right? If you go up here, you wanna make sure you click on, under, under text, you wanna click on style, see it here? And then go down to this where it says text color. Obviously, if you click this box, you can change the text color, see that? It's gonna be green, everyone knows that. Um, but there's a little hidden feature under text color where it says that there's two little arrows and you wanna go ahead and click on those, see that? And it says text color right there. Go down to image fill and click on that. What's gonna happen is it's gonna have like a little gray box here and you're gonna see it turned to gray. Now, what a lot of people don't realize you can do here is actually drag, you know, grab just an image and drag it into here and it'll change the texture. So leave this highlighted like this and let me show you what you do. So you go over here, these are just images over here. You wanna click like a textured image, but I'm, for, for this purpose, I'm just gonna click any image. So you click this image over here and I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna drag it all the way over here into this little gray box. See it here? I'm gonna let go on this gray box. And what it did is it put it in there. Now look what happened. If you look at this, it textured my text behind that image, or the image is basically the texture of the text. So if I go ahead and make this a lot bigger, you'll see that now I have that image. It was a jellyfish, so it's kind of kind of look weird here. But it actually made it purple, and all the jellyfish features are showing up in the text. Again, you can do the same thing. Select this, 
pick a different one, like this is a green image over here, so let me go ahead and drag this into here. And now watch what happens. It's gonna usually take a couple seconds, there it goes. Now look at that text, see how cool that is? So the effect of this is really, really interesting. And you probably wouldn't have been able to do text like this before because obviously there's no, there's no text feature like this built in. But now look at that text, it's green, white, brown, really cool feature, use it a lot in like flyers and even titles on documents. All right, so the next tip is gonna be just for people that maybe are writing documents for school or they wanna see how many words or paragraphs they have in a document, really easy, just click on the document. What you wanna do next is you wanna go up to the view up here and then go down to show word count here. And there's a couple features built into this I'll show you. So click on that and you'll notice way down here at the bottom, you can see it, it's barely, you, know, you can barely see it. It'll say 821 words, so it counts all the words here. But if you actually click on that little, you know, these little arrows here down here, You'll see that it actually gives you characters, you know, without spaces, character with spaces, paragraphs, and pages. So it gives you a whole bunch of different information here, um, which is, you know, really useful. You can go ahead and select text like this, and you'll see that that text I selected is only 148 words. You can go ahead and see it's one paragraph, obviously, 690 characters. So whatever you select, it's going to give you the, you know, it's going to continue to read this out down here. And then if you want to turn this off, obviously, just go back up to view and then hide word count there, and it's gonna go away. So just a quick tip. All right, and this final one is if you wanted to create maybe a newsletter or something to that effect. So here's your document. Maybe you have an image in here as well. What you wanna do is first you wanna select all the text you wanna do this to. So make sure you don't have the title selected, otherwise it'll happen to the title too, which you don't want. You'll see the effect in a second. So select the text that you want. If it's multiple pages, select everything, including the image. Then what you wanna do is click on layout right here. And then go into Columns, you can see it here. So click Columns, and you'll see everything in here is basically set for you, but you go ahead and click on this little arrow that goes up, and look at that. So right off the bat, you'll see uh, it's gonna create your document into two columns, and then you can go ahead and drag and drop, or you know, basically resize this any way you want. If you wanna go ahead and make this bigger, put this in the middle of the document like this. So if you're making a newsletter or something where you want two or three documents, again, you can go ahead and go like this. Uh, let me go ahead and click on three columns. It's gonna get a little bit harder with the text this size, but you get the gist of it. You can go ahead and easily put columns in, rearrange your photos, and it's gonna make it look more like a newsletter. So if you're doing something for like a church or something, go ahead and use this you know, to make a document look a little bit more professional, although this doesn't right here, but you get the jet, you know, you get the, the drift of it. So anyways, just wanted to share that with you because a lot of people don't ever use it. All right, so helpful, not helpful. Let me know in the comments. These are going to be five techniques you can use, obviously, and they're just not documented. So, for instance, you can either pick them up watching videos like this one or some other videos like I did, or you can read about them in articles and, and various things like that. But unless you do that, they're really not documented, and a lot of times, unless you see someone actually use this technique, you're not even going to know about it. And I'm not sure why Apple does it. Apple should create maybe documentation in all their programs. I'm sure there's obviously a lot of books written on them, but maybe it should come from Apple just saying, these are all the features that are built into it, go at it. But a lot of times you have to figure them out yourself, and uh, you know, obviously, whether they're useful or not may or may not be for everyone, and depending on how you use it. But Pages is a pretty powerful program if you start getting into the kind of nuts and bolts of it. So let me know in the comments of what you think. Let me know if this is useful. I might make another one with a couple more, maybe five more different techniques you can use. And uh, let me know if, you know, obviously I can do them on other programs in the Apple ecosystem as well if you want me to. Um, so let me go ahead and end the video, and I hope everyone enjoys these. I'll talk to you soon. I do maybe, you know, three to four videos a week. Talk to you soon. Peace.